Hi and welcome to the video on carrying out stress analysis on, on a, an engineering component. The first thing I'd like you to do, if you haven't done it already, is to open up Inventor. We're going to be using uh, Autodesk Inventor today. There's an icon on your desktop. You can just double click that and open that up and get that, get that up and running. I'm using a 2015 version, which I've just realised you're probably running a 2017 version. It's going to be pretty similar. There may be a few differences, but I'm sure you can work them out. So while that's running, I would also like you to go to Moodle. And if you go to, to your courses, scroll down into uh, Unit 8, Engineering Design, what I've done is I've put a component in there. So this component is this anti-roll bar blade that we've been that we've been talking about. And all you'll need to do is simply click on here and it should just download that I part. You can see it's it's, it's an inventor part. So that's in your downloads. Personally I like to to save it to my desktop. I think it's easier to find um, but um, but it's up to you. You can always you can always open it up, open it up from um, from your downloads if you want to. So you can just copy just copy and paste it to your desktop if you if you want to do it. I've already got about six of these there now where I've pasted it. Okay. But that's basically what we're going to do is we're just going to download this part. So we're now going to go back to Inventor, which hopefully is opened up by now. And if you go up to the top left icon, so this is kind of our start button. If you click that to open that, we're going to open a part up. Later on we might look at creating a new part, but now we're just going to open this part up. So hover on open, we click open. I'm probably teaching to suck eggs here, but uh, but you never know. You might want to do it. And if we look in our desktop or our downloads, we should find anti-roll bar blade. So this inventor part, So we simply click to select, you can either double click or, or click open. So this is a Inventor is a big program. It's it's graphics hungry. It's, it's it's processor hungry. So so it might just take a little while to load up. It has a lot of features. It it does a lot of things. Um, it's uh, it's equivalent of SolidWorks. If you if you've used SolidWorks before, it has the same sort of feel. And you'll notice a lot of similarities with OnShape. So they're trying to bring OnShape up to this kind of level. Okay. So so this part will open up now and there we go so you can you can see we have our we have our part you can also see in the tree how I created it but uh, we can have a look at that a little later the first thing I want to say is how we manipulate components in this environment it is similar to OneShape but it has some slight differences so if I go to you've probably hopefully got a sheet on this but if you want to zoom in and out use the mouse wheel same as OneShape left button selects um, hold down the mouse wheel and drag to pan so that will move you left right up and down but the big difference is if you want to tumble it then you need to press shift and hold down the mouse wheel so it's not right click and drag okay so that's 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 probably the big the big difference here the other thing is just to be careful of is that it zooms really fast and it's very easy to lose your part zoom in and out and think oh no it's gone I've lost it forever if that happens this little icon on the right here which is zoom all will get you back click that it will bring the part back okay so remember it zooms into wherever your wherever your cursor is okay and if your cursor is off to one side the part will zoom and if you move the cursor you'll lose it you could lose it forever okay so this will bring you back Okay, so we've got our lovely engineering component here um, opened up, and it is the anti roll bar blade that we've been looking at. So, along the top here, we have various different uh, environments we can work in, and we actually want to go to environments. So, we're going to open up environments, and in here, you can see a number of things. So, we can go to Inventor Studio where we can render if you want to make some fancy pictures. Um, but we're going to do a stress analysis. So we're going to open up, open up our stress analysis environment. And at the moment, there's 
there's nothing we can't get into anything it seems a bit strange because we want to create a simulation okay, so we're going to open this up and we don't really need to change anything for what, what we're going to do here if you want to call it something different just so you can find it if you want to call it anti, anti roll bar it doesn't really matter but we're just going to say OK so we're going to create this new this new simulation for it. Now we can we have all these options here to do this. And also we have on we now have our tree um, part tree working in here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign a material to this component because at the moment it's just a, a generic solid. It, um, it, is, it doesn't really have any material that that exists. Okay, so we're going to click on Assign Materials. And that should hopefully open up. So at the moment, as you can see, it's made of generic Inventor material. So we want to set it to a material. So you click Materials, and what will happen is we'll open up a whole range of materials. And if we, if we hover on them, so you can have copper, you can have gold if you want, you can make a gold anti-roll bar. It sort of vaguely simulates what it might look like with this. So, you know, you can have a clear one, polycarbonate if you want to. But this anti-roll bar is made from, a, from an alloy steel. Okay. Now, we can't put this on directly, so what we need to do is we need to add this to our, our document uh, materials. So we're simply going to click and drag this up here and it now gives us an alloy steel option. And if we then click that to select, it's now turned this into alloy steel. And it does a lot more than just look like, or vaguely look like alloy steel. It's now gonna calculate using the properties of that material. So later on, if you want to, you can try changing the materials and see what happens to it as we put loads on it. So it will literally simulate uh, what happens when you load it up for that material? Okay, so we just now we just just close that down and say OK. As you can see now, it's changed into alloy steel, and that's what we can do. And we can create our own custom materials if we know sort of the Young's modulus and things like that of the material. We we could assign it any material we want. Okay, so we've now set our material. The next thing we need to do is constrain it. So we're going to put a load on it. We're going to try and bend this bar. So we need to hold it at one point, and then we're going to put a load in another place. So we need to consider where we're going to where we're going to hold it. And this section here screws into the mounting on the end of the on the end of the, the anti-roll bar itself. So effectively, we're going to hold this area here. So we can have different kinds of constraints. We can have a pin constraint, frictionless constraint, if it was something that could still wanted to move around a little bit. But we're going to fix it down. So we're simply going to click Fix Constraint, and then it's asking us for a location. And what I would suggest is that we're going to put a location on here. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, somewhere around on this face here. All right. So we, we say Apply. We have, to, we have to actually apply that now. Now we've done it. And if it's well, it's accepted that. So we close that down. Doesn't look like much has happened, but we actually we actually have this constraint. And if we open up the little bar, our uh, little tree here, if we hover on the fixed constraint, we can see where we've constrained it. Okay. So now we're going to apply a load to this to this blade. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a load to this end. So if we um, click on force, so we're going to apply a force to this. It's asking us for first of all for our location. So our location is going to be the the tip of this the tip of this blade. I think we'll do it on the tip. Okay. And the next thing it asks for direction, and we have to actually select. Tell it that. So we click on here to say yes. I'm going to tell you a direction. And what it wants is either going to apply it normal to a face. So 90 degrees to a face, or in line with a line that we select. In this case, I'm going to select this line here, so this edge. As you can see now, it shows us the direction. So it's uh, in theory, this is the blade in its stiffest mode. Right? And then we're also then going to select 
the size of the load, and I'm going to put 500 newtons on this. So approximately 50 kilos. I click apply. So it has a think about it, and it says it's okay. It's not very intuitive to say cancel, but effectively we're now going to cancel it. Okay. So if we also look at our load, we have our we have our load set in here, and if we hover on it, you can see it highlights it highlights our load. So now we've set up our simulation environment, and we can actually click simulate. So if I now say go, and then run, it's going to start crunching lots of numbers. It's not a hugely difficult simulation but it takes a little bit of calculation for it to think about it and there we go so we can see the results of this load that we've that we've put on here and we have a number of different types of stress that we can apply to this so it's showing us it's showing us if I can double click this okay so it's showing us where the areas of highest stress are, and red is so red is our maximum stress. As you can see, that's where it's constrained. This is the point of greatest leverage. You consider the moments we're effectively taking moments about this point here. So this is this is our highest stress, um, and this is our lowest stress. So that's that's interesting that we can show the stress. But what I particularly want to look at here is I want to know how much this is going to deflect by. So I'm going to click on displacement, and we can see here how far it's displaced. And now our chart has changed to distance, and the maximum displacement is 2.3 millimeters, which not surprisingly is, is on the end. So when we put a 500 newton load on this bar, it will move by, by 2.3 millimeters, and as we can see, quite understandably the displacement gets less and less and less towards the end. Now we have a number of things we can we can do. We can probe here um, to give us our maximum value, which is not surprisingly of course on the end. Uh, we can also do things like we can animate it. So if you really want to have a look at what's happening, we can animate this now. Uh, and if you have something which is more complex, particularly so we can actually watch it, watch it deflecting. Okay. So we're we're quite powerful, um, and this is often known as finite element analysis. So what what it does to calculate this, it breaks it down into lots of little triangles, and that's what it does. It's working out all the stresses in these little triangles. So these are all the elements of it, uh, and we can create a finer mesh if we want something more accurate. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of that for a second. And then we can also look at the safety factor. So it can tell us whether we are, whether this is likely to break or not. So if we have a safety factor of less than one, it will probably break. And this is where it gets particularly, um, if we look at the minimum here, let's, let's just probe the minimum. So the minimum is around here. So it really doesn't like that. Now in the real world, that's, that's just because we've got a lot of pressure on it. Okay, but as long as there's nowhere along here, so everywhere else along here is going to be in the order of sort of about three or more. So it's plenty strong enough in theory. If we made this out of some softer material, we might get problems with it breaking. Okay, but it's really nice. We can see the stress um, and the safety loading distribution on this as, as we bend it. So we spoke earlier about this being an adjustable device so what we want to do is look at the other extreme so this is in its stiffest setting and if we go back now uh, and we we look at our force if we double click on our force here we can edit edit this force so in fact what, what I'm going to do is it's probably easier just to if I right click on it I can just delete it and I'll set it up again so if we click force now, the location is again going to be on the tip of this blade, but the direction is going to be at 90 degrees to it. So I'm going to click this face, and now you can see it's slightly offset, but it's actually going 90 degrees. So it's going across it in its, in its weakest direction. We're going to put the same load on it, 500 newtons that force 
and we're going to run the simulation again and we're going to see the differences, particularly the difference in deflection. That's that's really what I'm looking at with this component. If I remember to click run, let it crunch the numbers. And now it it kind of defaults to what it shows you. So it may not look like it's 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 bent a little more, but it, it, it exaggerates the amount it, it bends. Because otherwise if something's moved such a small amount that you can't actually tell it's moved. So it, it will exaggerate that. If we look at displacement now, what we can see is whereas before it was about it was about two and a half millimeters, now the deflection is twenty six millimeters. So it's about an inch. So that's a huge difference in deflection. So this is this is the range we the range we have. So this 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 section now is going with a big deflection. So again, I can if I want, I can I can animate this. It's not going to look a lot different. So actually, because it tries to bring it within a certain bring it within a certain range, um, and again, we can look at the safety factor. We can look at the stresses in this. Uh, the first principle. So we can see that the stresses and the shape of the blade, it's tapered so that hopefully we bring the stress, we even it out, rather than just making a very high stress point here. And as you can see, there's, there's a reasonably gradual shape. We can't do it perfectly. And again, we can look at safety factor. Right. And actually, it, it doesn't like that very much. We are, we are pushing this material, <laughs> to be honest. We're, we're making it do things it doesn't really like to do. But, but hey, that's 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 kind of what we're here for is to is to push things to the extreme okay so have a play with that you can change the material that's that's quite interesting if you want to if you want to change the material see what see what happens with um with with different materials uh or you can move on to the next video and that will just show you quickly how to draw your own part just a very simple lump if you like um and and you can put it in and you can try it and see it see it for yourself. Okay?